What do you think you're doing? My mother will have your head. I doubt that. On the surface, kids' movies are nothing more than bright, colorful images and happy, straightforward fairy tales. But sometimes there are some extra details packed within. Please, Hopper! I'll get more grasshoppers and be back next season, but you won't. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie subplots and themes you missed as a kid. You know, Marty, you look so familiar to me. Do I know your mother? Yeah, I think maybe you do. For this list, we're looking at movies with hidden messages, secondary storylines, or complex ideas that our younger minds probably didn't catch on to when we first saw them. What happened in here? Oh, you need my room. Oh, and just so you know, a spoiler alert might be in order. I bet he only likes to tinkle in the woods. I did not need to know that. Number 10, AIDS, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Ravus! Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft, Wizardry, and Sexually Transmitted Infections. Bloody hell! Yep, there seems to be more to the magic of Harry Potter's world than we originally understood. Lycanthropy is an incurable affliction that turns humans into werewolves through magical means during a full moon. Professor Lupin. <laughs> Professor Remus Lupin has been infected with this malady, and werewolves are dealt with in wizard society in a strikingly similar manner to how HIV AIDS was perceived when it first surfaced. I told Dumbledore you were helping an old friend into the castle, and now here's the proof. Brilliant, Snape. Lycanthropy, much like AIDS in the 80s, is seen as a disease that needs to be controlled for fear that it will spread among the population like a pandemic. This is perhaps most evident in how Snape treats Lupin because of his condition. Well, well, uh, Lupin, out for a little walk in the moonlight, are we? Number nine, a metaphor for concentration camps, Chicken Run. Chickens go in, I come out. That's right, a movie about a bunch of chickens trying to escape a farm and their cruel captors is actually an allegory for the concentration camps of World War II. Shocked? We'll break it down for you. Firstly, the chicken houses share a remarkable resemblance in design to the living quarters at Auschwitz, especially with regards to their drab, grim appearance. Secondly, the chickens represent the Jewish prisoners and how they were forced into labor. If they refused, they were immediately executed, or in the case of Chicken Run, turned into a pie. Chicken pies? <laughs> Speaking of pies, in the end, Mrs. Tweety decides to turn all the chickens into pies, mirroring Hitler's final solution. Dark stuff. You are going to be a pie. Number eight, it's all about puberty, Spider-Man. Tally ho. He's got radioactive blood and a whole lot of hormones kicking in. This one shouldn't be too much of a stretch to understand, as underneath the spandex and high-flying superheroics, Peter Parker is just a mild-mannered teenager going through the same growing pains any other pubescent youth would experience. At the start of the movie, Peter is tiny, timid, and unbelievably awkward around girls. However, after a radioactive spider bites him, his body begins to undergo some very major transformations, particularly in his <clears throat> muscles. Any better this morning? Any change? Change? Yeah. Big change. Peter then begins sprouting small hairs and producing a white sticky substance that he can shoot out of his body. Superpowers or not, it's a good idea to shut the door while <clears throat> exercising. What's, what's going on in there? I'm exercising. Number seven, kidnapped by trolls, Frozen. Come on, Sven. When we meet young Kristoff and his pet reindeer Sven, they live among a group of ice pickers. Soon afterwards, Kristoff and Sven break off from their group to follow an ice path, which leads them to a troll colony. Since the pair is so cute, the trolls decide to adopt them. Trolls? Shush, I'm trying to listen. We should mention here that in Scandinavian folklore, trolls have a tendency to kidnap. So this one's even backed up by legend. When I was a kid, it was just me and Sven until they you know, kind of took us in. 
Kristoff later introduces these trolls to Anna as his family, so it doesn't seem like the trolls kept these guys against their wills. We'll just chalk that up to Stockholm Syndrome and ask you this. Can you imagine how his fellow ice cutters felt when they realized he was missing? Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna go. Number six, government control, a bug's life. You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Did you ever realize that the colony of ants and Hopper's Grasshopper Gang are actually representative of a repressed nation and its controlling government, respectively? It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. There have been comparisons made between how the grasshoppers make regular visits to collect food from the ants, and how corrupt politicians do nothing but collect big paychecks and force the average citizen into subservient positions. So where is it? Where's my food? The fact that the ants have to constantly gather food, coupled with Hopper's big speeches about how worthless they are, helps paint the picture of a dictatorship. Go ahead, take her. No, then get back in line. Furthermore, when Flick and the rest of his colony rise up to take a stand against Hopper, it accurately characterizes a society sick of their government's rules. Vive la révolution! You see, Hopper, nature has a certain order. The ants pick the food, the ants keep the food, and the grasshoppers leave. Number five, breeding a more powerful colony, ants. Okay, people, are we feeling good? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Another animated film about insects, ants also had subliminal messages hidden within. Come on, Z, help us build a bigger, better colony. And for crying out loud, try to be happy about it. It's clearly established that the villain General Mandible is intent on wiping out the part of the colony that he deems weak, in order to rebuild it from the ground up. You useless, ungrateful maggot! While we did not miss the part where Mandible sends a large group of said colony to their demise at the hands of a termite colony, we highly doubt that kids picked up on exactly how Mandible was planning to repopulate. Essentially holding Princess Bala against her will, Mandible was going to force her into mating with him, believing that their combined genes would produce the ultimate race. Do ants have sexual harassment lawsuits? Things are going to change around here. You're right, Princess. Things are going to change. Number four, mother is coping with divorce. E.T., the extraterrestrial. Maybe you ought to call your father and tell him about it. I can't. He's in Mexico with Sally. This science fiction classic is full of excitement and wonder, so we completely understand why this detail would fly under the radar for many youngsters. Mom, you can't come with me. What is it? Mary, just come with me. Considering that the prime focus of the film is the touching friendship between Elliot and E.T., you'd be hard pressed to pick up on little hints that the mother is struggling with a divorce. But just because these details are in the background doesn't mean they aren't important as the mother clearly exhibits signs of stress and sadness due to her current predicament. Fun fact, director Steven Spielberg actually modeled the plot for the movie on his own imaginary friend that he created as a child after his parents got divorced. If you ever see it again, whatever it is, don't touch it, just call me and we'll have somebody come and take it away. Like the dog catcher? Number three, Bow Chicka Wow Wow, The Lion King. This stinks. Oh, sorry. Can you feel the sexual tension tonight? When Nala finds her childhood friend Simba, the two are elated to be seeing each other again. Simba? Ah! How did you... How did you... <laughs> However, once the reunion and introductory hellos are made, Elton John's Can You Feel the Love Tonight begins to play, and things get really steamy really fast. The lions bounce and skip around as their attraction to one another shifts from playful flirting to something more physical. If that's not enough, the erotic atmosphere implied here hits a fever pitch when Nala gives Simba the googly eyes. As the scene fades from them lying together in the grass to Simba and Nala snuggling, we can't help but feel the movie left out what happened in between. Yada yada yada. Number 2. Incest. Back to the future. 
Mom, is that you? You're there now. Just relax. After Marty McFly travels back in time thanks to Doc Brown's wacky science experiment, his mother takes care of him. A younger, less nun-like and thin version of his mother, that is. How's your head? Oh, uh, good. Fine. Oh, I've been so worried about you ever since you ran off the other night. Are you okay? Things get uncomfortable when young Lorraine develops an unusually strong attraction towards him. And there's tangible, albeit comedic, sexual tension between the two. My name is Lorraine. Lorraine Bates? Yeah. But you're... Uh... That's all fine and dandy, until Marty realizes that his continued existence is in danger since he interfered with his parents' meeting, and has to volunteer to get fresh with his mom to bring them back together. But we digress. Do you mind if I sit here? No. Fine. No. Good. Fine. Good. Lorraine doesn't realize Marty is her future son, and the whole thing's played for laughs. But Marty does lock lips with his own mother. That'd be traumatic for anyone. You know what I do in those situations? What? I don't worry. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Don't do that! Why? Dead, understand? They shot it. When did you first know you were a... A mutant? Uh, but you cut that out. Number one, Frollo's lustful obsession with Esmeralda, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Your orders, sir? Find the gypsy girl. Frollo's displays of attraction towards Esmeralda in The Hunchback of Notre Dame range from mildly inappropriate to downright creepy, most often leaning towards the latter. You think you've outwitted me, <sighs> but I'm a patient man. We understand being attracted to someone, but the lengths to which Frollo goes just to be close to the gypsy beauty are extremely disturbing. What are you doing? I was just imagining a rope around that beautiful neck. Despite claiming to feel disgust for her kind, he doesn't seem to mind getting cozy with her. Frollo's sickening behavior includes manipulating Quasimodo into finding Esmeralda for him. I know where her hideout is. And tomorrow at dawn, I attack with a thousand men. He further amps up his creeper rating when he makes her choose between being with him or death. Frollo was already a scumbag, but his sexual advances towards Esmeralda cement him as your stereotypical creepy old man. But this one's far from harmless. Quasimodo! Do you agree with our list? Something's different. I'll figure it out. Stop lecturing me, please. What movie themes and subplots completely flew over your head as a kid? I'll be down before you can say... Next vegetables? For more unexpected top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.